In our previous lectures, we understood the concepts of big omega and big theta notations. Now we will solve some problems based on big omega and big theta notations. So let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics. The first topic is big omega notation solved problem. We will solve the problem based on big omega notation first and then we will proceed and solve problem based on big theta notation. So, there will be a total of two problems that we are going to solve in this lecture. Let's start with the first topic, big omega notation solved problem. Here is the problem. Find the lower bound for fn which is equal to 10n square plus 5. What is the meaning of lower bound? We are interested in finding the lower bound, hence we need to understand the meaning of lower bound first. We already know what is upper bound. Upper bound of some function fn is a function which grows asymptotically greater or bigger than fn. On the other hand, lower bound for fn is some function which grows asymptotically lesser than fn. So, we are interested in finding the function which grows asymptotically lesser than fn. fn is 10n square plus 5. And we want to find some other function which grows asymptotically lesser than this function. How do we find one? We already learned how to find the upper bound for a specific function. We need to follow three step process in order to find the upper bound for a specific function. Step number one is to find the dominant term in the given function. Step number two is to assume some gn based on the dominant term. And step number three is to apply the definition of big O notation. In case of finding the upper bound, we need to apply the definition of big O notation. In case of lower bound, the first two steps are same, but the last step is different. We need to apply the big omega definition in case of lower bound. So, in order to find the lower bound for fn, we need to find the dominant term of fn. Then we need to assume some gn based on the dominant term. And finally, we need to apply the definition of the big omega notation. So, now we know what steps we need to follow. Let's try to solve this problem. First, we need to find the dominant term in fn. Here we can observe 10n square is clearly the dominant term because even for n equal to 1, this value is greater than this value. Here we will get 10. And here we have 5. 10 is greater than 5. So, for all n greater than or equal to 1, 10n square is greater than 5. And hence, 10n square is the dominant term. Now, let's apply step number 2. According to step number 2, we need to assume some function gn based on the dominant term. Recall, we can assume gn by eliminating the constants in the dominant term. Here we have this constant 10, hence we can eliminate it and we are left with n square. So, we can assume that n square is gn. So, this is our assumption. gn is equal to n square. And it might be possible that gn becomes the lower bound for fn. So, it might be possible that after applying the definition of big omega notation, gn becomes the lower bound for fn. Now, let's see whether this is true or not. Let's apply the definition of big omega notation. According to the definition of big omega notation, fn is big omega of gn if and only if fn is greater than or equal to c times gn for some c greater than 0 and for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. According to this definition, we can say fn is big omega of gn or in other words, gn is the lower bound of fn if and only if fn is greater than or equal to c times gn. If it is the case that this inequality is true for some c greater than 0 and for some n naught where n is greater than or equal to n naught, then we can say gn is the lower bound of fn. Now, let's find out whether this is true or not. Let us assume some c, let's say c is equal to 10. 
Then after substituting Fn by 10n square plus 5, C by 10 and Gn by n square, we will get this inequality. 10n square plus 5 greater than or equal to 10n square. Can we say this inequality is true for this C which is equal to 10 and for all n greater than or equal to some n naught? We can observe that 10n square plus 5 is greater than 10n square for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. If we plug in 1 here, we will get 10 times 1 which is equal to 10 and 10 plus 5 is 15. And if we plug in 1 here, we will get 10. 10 is less than 15. So for n equal to 1, this inequality satisfies. Not only for 1, for all values of n greater than or equal to 1, this inequality is satisfied. Therefore, we can say this inequality is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. And hence, 10n square plus 5 is big omega of n square. As this inequality is satisfied, we can say fn is big omega of gn. We know fn is 10n square plus 5 and gn is n square. Therefore, 10n square plus 5 is big omega of n square for c equal to 10 and n naught equal to 1. This is n naught and this value is 1. That is why I have written n naught equal to 1. And therefore, we can say the gn which we have assumed which is equal to n square is the lower bound of fn which is 10n square plus 5. So, we are successful in finding the lower bound for fn which is n square. I hope this problem is clear. Now, let's move to the next problem based on big theta notation. Here is the problem. Show that fn is equal to n cube plus 3n square which is equal to theta of n cube. We need to show this or in other words we need to prove this that n cube plus 3n square is theta of n cube. Here we have theta notation. Therefore, we need to apply the definition of the big theta notation. Theta or big theta both are one and the same. So, let's apply the definition of the big theta notation. According to the definition of big theta notation, fn is big theta or theta of gn if and only if c1 times gn is less than or equal to fn and fn is less than or equal to c2 times gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c1, c2 and n naught are all constants. We need to prove this inequality is true in order to say that fn is theta of gn. gn is n cube and we already know fn is n cube plus 3n square. We now need to prove that c1 times gn is less than or equal to fn and fn is less than or equal to c2 times gn. Let's first prove that fn is less than or equal to some constant c2 times gn and then we will show that c1 times gn is also less than or equal to fn. Then we would be able to prove that fn is theta of gn. So, let's do this. Let's prove fn is less than or equal to c2 times gn. Let us assume some c2, let's say c2 is equal to 2. Then we will get n cube plus 3n square less than or equal to 2 times n cube. Remember, I have assumed gn as n cube. So, in place of gn, I have written n cube and in place of c2, I have written 2. So, in the right hand side, we have 2 times n cube. And in the left hand side, we have fn which is n cube plus 3n square. And I am assuming the constant 2 here because here we have n cube plus 3n square. By making the right hand side 2n cube, it might be the possibility that after some point, 2n cube will be greater than or equal to n cube plus 3n square. If I have assumed the constant 1, then it will be just n cube. 
and there is no possibility that n cube will become greater than or equal to n cube plus 3n square after some point. So choose the constant accordingly. Now getting back to the inequality, this inequality is true for n greater than or equal to 3. You can find this on your own. For all n greater than or equal to 3, this inequality is true. Hence, we can say fn is less than or equal to c2 times gn. We are done with this part. We have proved that fn is less than or equal to c2 times gn. Now, let's prove whether c1 times gn is less than or equal to fn or not. So, this is the second part. Here I have written fn greater than or equal to c1 times gn. This is same as c1 times gn less than or equal to fn. Now let's try to show that this inequality is true. Let us assume some c1. Let's say c1 is equal to 1. Then we will get this inequality n cube plus 3n square greater than or equal to n cube. Here we have assumed the constant 1. And n cube plus 3n square is always greater than n cube. Therefore, this inequality is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. Hence, we can say fn is greater than or equal to c1 times gn. So, the second part is also done. We have successfully proved that fn is greater than or equal to c1 times gn, where c1 is equal to 1 and n0 is equal to 1. In case of this inequality, fn less than or equal to c2 times gn, c2 is equal to 2 and n0 is equal to 3. In case of this inequality, fn greater than or equal to c1 times gn, c1 and n0 are both 1. We know c1 is 1 and c2 is 2. But what about n0? We need to select n0 such that both these inequalities must be satisfied. We know this inequality is true for n greater than or equal to 3. And this inequality is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So, we cannot take n0 as 1 for both these inequalities because for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, this inequality is not satisfied. But for all n greater than or equal to 3, both the inequalities are satisfied. Therefore, n naught must be equal to 3. Hence, we can say n cube plus 3n square, which is fn, is equal to theta of n cube for c1 equal to 1, c2 equal to 2, and n naught equal to 3. So, we have successfully proved that fn is indeed theta of n cube. So, with this, we are done with this problem also. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.